aspire to be? I mean, does, mm. does, does it happen to you yet when you walk into a room, do people go, ah, it's George Clooney? Yeah, my father did that once. He did. Yeah, it was, uh, thank <laughs> Get God, out, he said. He yeah. got the name right. That was the thing I was so surprised about. Um, uh, Okay, some of that must happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, oh, that happens. It, but yeah, there's I mean, a difference between being faint at the mention of your name well, all over the place. That'll change too. Um, uh, the, there is a difference between being a television star and being a movie star. Sure. Uh, I am now a television star. I'm famous from be, for for being on television. Yeah. Um, when you're a movie star, you are 80 feet high and you're bigger than life. And when someone meets you, they're kind of stunned by you mm. and they don't know what to say. Now. When you're a television star, you're in those people's homes every day, and they can make you talk or not talk, yeah. and you're smaller than they are, and they feel as if they watch you in their house coats, and they feel as if they know you personally. Mm -hmm. And so when they run into you, they're like, hey, George, how you doing? And they're pissed off that you don't remember them. And you're like, hey, how's it going, uh, Joe? Uh, and it is funny. There is a difference. There is a, you're much more approachable. Um, that's okay. I don't mind that so much. Uh, I, I like where I, my career is at. I like w w what I do. When you think about it, I'm going to get a little bit of a run here. You know, Batman will be a big film, and I've got a, a film after that. The first film for DreamWorks is a good film. Um, so that's the Peacemaker. It's Peacemaker with so Nicole Kidman. Yeah. I'm going to get a little run. I'm going to get a chance at a film yeah. career. And it, it, as time goes on, you know, you don't get to be in the public eye that much. People get sick of you. I get sick of me, and I like me. <laughs> I'm one of my bigger fans, you know, and I'm sick of me. Um, so there's a period of time that you yeah. get, and then that's about it. And then you can have a couple of resurgence uh, in your career. But for the most part, you really get a, a very kind of limited window. Uh, so my uh, goal is to try and do as much work and try to do better work as you go. Um, uh, and for me to get better too, you know, I have a lot to learn. Did, did you at any point, you know, when all, this, all the good things started happening, because it's mm -hmm. all happened in the last three years basically. Yes. It? Was there at any point there when you thought, hey, why, why me? I mean, why, why didn't all this happen to some other fellow? Why no, I always thought it should happen to me. <laughs> it's funny, Steven Spielberg said precisely the same thing when I asked him to suggest it. No, it's true. I think that it, you can't go into this uh, business not thinking that you. Uh, and, and I don't mean this in, in an egotistical way, because it's not. Uh, not thinking that you should, at some point, you know, reach some level of success. I, I think that y if you're an actor, for instance, every person who, who becomes an actor, they can talk about, oh, I just want to do the work. Or just, but the truth is there is some need for attention, and there is some belief that if you just got the right part, or if you just, you know, and, and there is, by the way, some truth to that, you know. if. You know, anyone could be great in a specific role, and and things, their lives turn around and change. Sure. And, um, uh, so there, if you don't have that hope, then I don't think you're really going to last long in this business. You, you don't sound as if you take it too seriously, which I think is good. I mean, seriously, but not solemnly. If you if you at any point take this part of it seriously, take yourself seriously in it, then then I think you're making a really big mistake because boy, it just goes away so quickly. You know, it just. You know, there, there was a show here called "This Is Your Life" with Ralph Edwards, and yeah, we we have you have the same. Yeah. And they would always bring out, you know, Buster Keaton, and he'd be sitting there, you know, like this, and they'd go, "Buster, you owned all the studios, you know, everybody kissed your ass, the world was your oyster, and then tragedy struck, and he's like, <laughs> and he can't talk, and and you realize because every single star that comes out there owned the studios and was a was the hero, and now can't get a guest shot on Baywatch, and you realize. <laughs> That, a terrible thought, but it's true. Yeah. So what you have to understand is, it's not a question of whether or not that tragedy is going to strike. It is. It's how you handle it, and if you're ready for it when it does. And that's all, because it's the rest of this is enjoying the period of time that you get. You know, you got. It sounds enjoy as it. if you're pretty ready for it for, for when that day. I was. Yeah, I was comes. fairly well groomed for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you do enough bad TV, you're ready. You are, whether, whether you, you like to admit this or not, I mean, you are the new heartthrob on the block, you know, the, the, the sex symbol. Um, do people get the wrong idea of you from that and from the character you play in ER? I mean, mm -hmm. are, are, you, are you a great womanizer? Are you <coughs> to be on, in, well, actually, I was a little attracted to you right now. <laughs> and I'm just saying that, and I don't mean that sexually. I just well, mean... I, I'm shucks. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there's always the danger of people thinking you are what you play. Yeah. You know, what I play on the show is an alcoholic, womanizing, you know, pediatrician. 
So uh, in re if you read every tabloid you read, you'll hear me, you know, stories about me being a drunken womanizer, you know. But not uh, a pediatrician. But yeah. they leave that part out. Yeah. But, I, but there'll always be some story about me saving a kid. <laughs> so they'll always throw you a bone, you know, here's something nice.